I think it's about time now uh, that um, that we started. Uh, so let me just open in prayer. Lord, we just thank you for the day, the day that you have made, that we can rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you that we can share fellowship in the wonderful name of Jesus. And we can know that you are a faithful God who always keeps his promises. We recall that promise that where two or three are together in your name, even virtually, you will be there. So, Lord, we pray that we might know your presence together and be blessed as we share in Jesus' name. I wonder if you ever feel like giving up. Uh, in recent weeks, I've had several nightmares with the technology. Uh, in the last devotion, I failed to connect at all. Uh, and then at the deacons meeting, I lost connections. And on Saturday, on Sunday, I managed to uh, organise a Zoom meeting and lock myself out as the host. So I couldn't let anybody in and the whole thing failed. Uh, then yesterday, Matthew had three goes at lunchtime, uh, but he didn't give up. He kept going. And then this morning, I, I tried to do a quick test run and find that I wasn't allowed to publish anymore. My admin access had vanished and uh, uh, scrambling around all morning with John and Emily and two, phone, two or three phone calls to Australia, Matthew finally helped me to get it out, uh, to sort it out. But the temptation is always there, isn't there, when things go wrong, to give up. We might feel like giving up. But you know, Jesus, Jesus never gives up on us. The psalmist in Psalm 136 repeated 26 times, your love endures forever. In every single verse, he gave thanks and said, your love endures forever. And I used to wonder as a child why there was so much repetition in this psalm. But it's a lesson that we need to learn over and over and over again. A few years ago, in uh, February, at the beginning of February, I was scheduled to go into hospital for a minor procedure which necessitated uh, an overnight stay. In Tuesday lunchtime, out uh, Wednesday lunchtime and back to the planned holiday Bible club meeting on Wednesday evening. It all sounded really simple. But something went drastically wrong. And by Wednesday afternoon, there were half a dozen doctors uh, all around my bed. I was having scans and all sorts of other things. And I was suddenly transferred by ambulance to Northwick Park Hospital, where there were more specialists and better facilities. I remained in hospital for the next two weeks. And when I was discharged, I found myself on a very long road back to full health, unable to take up any of my previous plans. And during the following months, I needed almost complete rest, punctuated by visits to A&E, lots of uh, x-rays and consultations. And then when I saw the consultant, at the end of March, he told me I needed another operation next Monday. And he added, not to worry, as they would be ex extra cautious this time, not to worry. But by the Sunday evening, I was still <laughs> worrying. And I decided to go to church, having not been in church since uh, the early February. And here I need to make a confession. Uh, we decided to go to Rice Slip in the evening rather than Rainless Lane as I felt I would be overwhelmed by love and swamped with questions if I came back to RLBC. So off I went to Ryslip. And it was one of those experiences where I felt the whole evening, the whole service was just for me. The hymns, the songs, the prayers, the messages all seemed to speak directly to me. As his theme, the, the speaker took a familiar passage from Genesis 3 about the fall and how Adam and Eve were tempted to disbelieve the word of God. And he linked this to Jesus' own teaching, especially in the prayers that Jesus taught his disciples, particularly, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. He then had a quiet period for each of us to think through the things that were tempting us right at that moment. And he gave a number of examples and he asked, well, are we really trusting in God's word to deliver us from temptation. And as the band played, we were asked to seriously ask the Lord to deliver us from temptations that we were facing. Did we really believe that God could deliver us? And then at the end of the service, the band continued to play and many folk remained in their seats for quite a while in an attitude of prayer. The band were playing the song, One Thing Remains, in which there's a chorus which repeats, your love never fails, it never gives up, 
it never runs out on me. Your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. It seems so appropriate, despite everything, God is always there. His love never fails, his love never gives up. After the service, I had the opportunity to speak to Derek and explain that I'd not deserted Rainless Lane, but was going in the hospital the next morning for a second operation. And despite all that the surgeon, the consultant and tonight's speaker had said, I was still being tempted to worry. And he turned to me and he said, Do not be anxious, the Lord is near. Do not be anxious, the Lord is near. And then he added that this was Paul's message to the little church in Philippi. Paul was in prison, but he wanted to send words of encouragement to the church. And as we drove home, I was thinking of this verse from Philippians 4. Do not be anxious, the Lord is near. Almost as soon as we got home, friends arrived, just returned from a journey, a holiday in Norfolk. And we spent a couple of hours happily reminiscing about past holidays when our children were little, uh, adventures on the beach, never a thought about hospitals, doctors, operations. I felt suddenly quite at peace. But at 10 o'clock, I needed to pack a bag to take to hospital. And as I was packing my Bible, I thought I would look up that verse and see what it actually says. So perhaps turn with me to Philippians 4, verses 4 to 7. There we read Paul writing to the church of Philippi, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And as I read the full context of these verses, it set my mind thinking. What a counterintuitive way of starting a section on, on anxiety with the command to rejoice. And then Paul adds two extra extensions to this command. We are to rejoice always, and then he repeats it again for extra emphasis. We're to be in no doubt whatsoever. whatsoever. We are to repeat, rejoice always, in every situation and at all times. Well, you might be thinking that's all right for the apostle to say. He's not got our problems. He's not got COVID-19. But just stop for a moment and think about Paul writing this letter from a Roman prison cell, chained to a Roman soldier, facing a trial that would probably be rigged, probably no way out other than through his execution. No, Paul had plenty of real things to worry about, genuine fears for the future. But as you read the whole letter to the Church of Philippi, it's full of joy, of rejoicing, of joyfulness in sentence, verse after verse. So the first and vital way of dealing with anxiety is to rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. I'll say it again. Rejoice. He then goes on to say, let your gentleness be evident to all, for the Lord is near. He wants his listeners to be gentle, kind, tender, forbearing, not wallowing in their own problems, not self-obsessed with any pity, but rather being considerate, reasonable. I noticed in my previous hospital visit how different folk treat the nurses and other staff and what a huge difference it makes if you're generous, spirited, reasonable, patient, thankful, encouraging. Those patients who were bitter, demanding, grumbling seem to get less care than the considerate, friendly ones. Paul wants our gentleness to be evident to all, not just to our friends, our family, the people we like, those who help us, but to everybody, to all. Why? Because the Lord is near. And now we get to the heart of dealing with anxiety, to remember that the Lord is near, always. And again, he issues them with another direct commandment. And again, there's a qualification. He tells them, do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, Present your requests to God. Yes, whatever the circumstances we are facing, the Lord wants us to bring our petitions to him. 
But once again, there's a counterintuitive element. We're to bring these situations before the Lord with gratitude, with thankfulness, giving thanks for the circumstances in which we find ourselves. And then, having suggested three commands, to rejoice always, to be gentle, to pray with thankfulness, he concludes with the most wonderful promise that the God of peace, who transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. This, this is the antidote to anxiety, the peace of Christ, given to us through his Holy Spirit, passing our understanding, filling us and empowering us to cope with any situation. Both our hearts and our minds and our thoughts are fully rested in the peace which Jesus gives to believers, to his followers. If you want to know what to think about as an antidote to anxiety, read the rest of the chapter and focus your thoughts. For Paul tells them we are to think on whatever is true, worthy, honourable, just, pure, lovely and worthy of praise. These subjects leave us with no place for any worries. By then, uh, going back to where I was, after reading and thinking about things, it was rather late and I needed to be up very early in the morning to get to hospital. Often, if we have a very challenging day ahead of us, for whatever reason, our thoughts turn to start running over all sorts of scenarios, what-ifs and concerns, and we don't sleep very well and we tend to wake up very early, we toss and turn all night. Well, that night, I had the best night's sleep since my first operation, and I woke totally at peace with the situation, without any feelings of anxiety, and praise the Lord, the second stay in hospital was far more comfortable and stressful than the previous one. So remember, rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, who, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. So, whatever is troubling you today, I don't know your circumstances, but these words written so long ago, these words which were a great comfort and assurance to me, they are for you today in your situation. So don't be anxious. Please be grateful, not anxious. But in every situation, in prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, with gratitude, present your requests to God. And the promise is that the Lord Jesus will bless you with his peace, which passeth all understanding. And remember that song, one thing remains, your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. Your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. And if you don't know the song, then look it up on YouTube afterwards and play it, because it's been a tremendous encouragement to me. The psalmist said, the love of God endures forever. The song says, your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. Paul encouraged us to draw near and to bring our petitions with thankfulness. So what are you thankful for today? If you've got anything you'd like to pray for now, uh, then, then, then let me know. I'll try, and go, I'll try and go through. Yes, there's lots of things that I think we can be thankful for. Uh, uh, Francesca has asked us to pray for her friend in surgery today. Uh, she says in the past she survived cancer, uh, prayed for her husband and children and family at this time. So, so let, let's pray and let's continue to be thankful today. Our Father and our God, we praise you and we thank you for all your provision for us day by day. We thank you that you are a God who provides. Most of all, we thank you that you provided your son, Jesus, as a substitute to for us all and you call us to draw near to you. We continue to thank you for all who've supported us during the lockdown, for our gardens, for the lovely weather, for friends who have called or texts, 
for phone calls and for uh, your presence with us in lockdown. We thank you, Lord, for all those that have had to work, for the police, for fire crews, for the NHS staff and all who have served us, delivery drivers and everyone. We thank you too for teachers and key workers and children returning to school. We pray that you will bless them and we give a special thanks for all who have recovered. But we continue to pray also for those that are struggling. We thank you especially uh, for uh, the opportunity to present our requests before you. And we pray for Francesca's friend and their family as she has surgery today. We pray that you will bless her husband and her children at this time. We thank you that you are near and that we can rejoice in you. But we pray for those serving you overseas, particularly, Lord, those in India and South America where the situation seems to be very difficult. We pray, Lord, that you would bless them and that you would be with them. We pray for the staff and for the residents of care homes. We pray too, Lord, for the food bank operations and for CAP clients, especially those that are suffering real hardship at this time. It's so hard for us sometimes to imagine how difficult it is for those that have been locked down in tower blocks without gardens, with noisy children and with not enough money. But we pray, Lord, that you would continue to bless them. We pray too, Lord, for... Uh, the families and relatives where there have been bereavements. And we pray, Lord, for uh, the ministry, for John and for Emily, for Karen and Rebecca, for those that serve us in the office. We just give you thanks. And finally, Lord, we pray for our government, that you will give them wisdom and guidance in making what decisions which are just so difficult without really knowing what the consequences will be. So Lord, we pray that you will continue to make us thankful. Help us to remember that the Lord is near and not to be anxious. Help us always to be thankful. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you that peace, that peace which is from the Holy Spirit and which passes all understanding. We ask that in the mighty, wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So be thankful during the day. Enjoy the rest of the day. And uh, and, and John, make sure you get the day off. Uh, having uh, interrupted your day off this morning, I'm sorry, but thank you anyway. So enjoy the day and God bless you all in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm -hmm.